Hey, Mark from Sound Masters here, and in today's video, we've got a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to replace a turntable cartridge. So let's get straight into that one. The process we're going to explain today is for a turntable that has a single piece straight tone arm. The process is slightly different in terms of alignment and installing if your turntable happens to have, for example, a tone arm that is an S-shaped tone arm with a detachable half inch head shell design. So if your turntable is of this variety, then I recommend you watch that video instead. So before we get started, I'm just going to go over some of the tools that you're going to need to perform this task as smoothly as possible. This is an old project. Uh, essential to um, deck that I'm going to perform as just as an example we're going to do the installation on this old deck of mine so uh, but what you will need is some long nose pliers and I like to buy long nose pliers that don't have the grips inside these are going to be kindest on the connectors and uh, less likely to damage anything as you're handling the the very delicate kind of wires as we install our new cartridge now you're also going to need precision screwdrivers the size and type of which you need are going to depend greatly on the kind of screws that are holding both the existing cartridge in place and the ones that are going to secure your new upgraded cartridge. So I'd like have a few on hand and sometimes your cartridge will ship with specific sized um, screwdrivers. So this is an Autofon one here that shipped with an Autofon cartridge and this is a Shure one that shipped with an old Shure cartridge of mine. So but it helps to have a wide set of these because you know sometimes the size uh, can vary slightly and you never know what you're going to be kind of dealing with. So it's good to have have a wide range of options just in case you encounter something that's a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker or you have one that's a Phillips head or one that's a, um, a flathead screwdriver so yeah you're going to need a selection of those uh, to align the cartridge you're going to need a protractor it helps I think to have both a paper version and also to have uh, a mirrored version so some people will prefer the mirrored version some people will prefer using just a plain paper um, protractor however the mirrored version the point of that is that it helps kind of give you a reflection which can help with visibility in terms of alignment so again I will put a link in the description below to all these tools so you can find out where you can get them and you can try which one works best for you but you are going to need some of these tools in one way or the other to perform this task now once you've installed the new cartridge you're going to have to uh, set the tracking force now of course you can do that roughly the traditional way by hovering the uh, tone arm over here and you balance with the counterweight so that it hovers it um, stays level and then essentially you set the dial at the end to zero and adjust the tracking force accordingly as per the manufacturer's recommended tracking force settings however that is not always the most accurate way of doing things you'll get close but you'll not know that it's exactly as per the manufacturer's recommended tracking force the optimal tracking force for the best performance so i like to check it on a tracking force gauge this is an electronic one that i use by neotech that will just enable you to give you the peace of mind to know that you've got that bang on and exactly right and you're getting the best out of that cartridge again there'll be a link in the description below where you can buy that and, and of course, you know, you're going to need your replacement cartridge. In this instance, we're taking an OM5E uh, Autoon cartridge, which is the one installed on this Project Essential 2 um, turntable here, and we're going to replace it with a an Autofon 2M Red. So, yeah, that's what we're going to need to perform this task, and we'll get straight into the process. So start by unscrewing the cartridge from the head shell, and you'll want to add or drop the stylus guard at this point before you get going as well, because if you're going to keep the cartridge or stylus for any reason, then we want to preserve it and protect that stylus. So with the cartridge now removed from its head shell in terms of the screws, we can gently remove the wires using the long nose pliers. So be very careful with these because they're, they're very delicate. So always pull the wires from the metal tips. Uh, never pull it from the wire itself as you'll almost certainly break the wires. 
So for this step, I like to remove the tone arm counterweight. This just makes it a lot more secure in terms of the tone arm. Now you could do this at any point in the procedure, of course, but particularly now that we don't have the cartridge weight on the other end, we want to make sure that the tone arm is securely in place and it's not going to bounce around. You could also use a cable tie to tie it in around the tone arm resting place, of course. This makes it extra secure. It's going to give you that little bit more confidence in handling the tone arm whilst installing your new cartridge. But it's really up to you and how comfortable you are with how securely it rests in its uh, standard resting place but with the stylus guard in place now we are actually going to install our new cartridge so we're going to gently connect the wires to the new cartridge using the long nose pliers you'll feel them click into place don't push too hard we don't want to risk damaging anything nice and gently does it and we'll get those wires in place nicely and securely connected so the wires are clearly color coded of course and all you need to do is match up the corresponding cable to its point um, which is labeled as red, green, white and blue. We now want to screw the cartridge into the head shell by slotting the screws through the holes from the top. Some cartridges require screws and nuts for attachment while many newer models have two threaded screw inserts that do away with the need for any nuts and bolts. This certainly makes it a lot less of a fiddly process but you know cartridges can vary from one to the next and some do have kind of different mounting methods so you should consult the manual of your particular cartridge to know exactly how this should be done. This particular cartridge does have two threaded screws so we're going to screw down um, from the top down into the cartridge itself. So leave the screws firm but don't tighten them too much for now because we need to leave a little bit of give there so that we can use the cartridge alignment protractor for optimum performance. Now that the cartridge is roughly installed we want to set the tracking force fairly roughly as well. So we're going to put the tone arm on the end here and we're going to balance that tone arm so that it floats and we're going to use, this is the old fashioned way of setting tracking force of course. So we're going to get it to hover um, so that we get uh, no, no tracking force whatsoever and then we set that dial over to zero and that's our that's our starting point so with that in place we're then going to set the tracking force as per the cartridge manufacturer's guidelines this particular cartridge should track at an optimum um, weight of 1.75 grams so now comes the really fiddly bit and ultimately one of the most important aspects of installing a new cartridge. So we want to set, uh, using the alignment protractor, we want to make sure that the cartridge is aligned for the best performance across the surface of the record, essentially as it pivots from the beginning of the record to the run out groove. A cartridge protractor has two null points where the stylus becomes tangent with the record groove. When your cartridge cantilever aligns to both null points, you will get the best possible tracking force across the record surface. Move back and forth between each null point until you get the alignment dead on. It's worth taking some time over this, so be patient and check from multiple angles. So before we can spin some records, we want to set our anti-skate and finalise our tracking force. Now with anti-skate, different turntables have different ways of performing this function. This particular one has a counterweight that is added via a, a kind of a fishing wire type wire, but other turntables will have dials for this function. So check your turntable manual to see how this is set. Next, we're going to finalise the tracking force. So I like to use a tracking force gauge to actually... Um, finalize this and get this spot on so obviously you can do it the old-fashioned way like we did earlier but using an electronic tr tracking force gauge such as this neotech one here I'll put a link in the description below we can get that tracking force to be spot on what it should be this particular cartridge should be 1.8 grams so that concludes today's tutorial we hope you found this useful if you'd like a written step-by-step -step guide then check the description below for a link where you can find that i'll also include in there the video and the link to where you can look at how to replace a cartridge on a head shell that we mentioned earlier which is a slightly different process uh, to what we've gone through here we've gone through more of a single piece tone arm type design in terms of the turntable and the process that's involved there so if you'd like to check out how to replace a um, phono cartridge on a head shell check the description below and you'll see that there as well so thanks ever so much for watching if you like the t-shirt i'm wearing um, check out our website yoursoundmatters.com for where you can find this on the front of here there's a badge that has the uh, crate diggers design as you can see but um popping up on the screen here on either side should be the reverse where it says um it's not hoarding if it's vinyl so if you like the design and you'd like to check out some of our other merch designs go over to our website and uh, check those out for yourselves and we hope you like them and thank you thank you ever so much for watching please like and subscribe to the channel and we will see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.